Okay, let's talk about the Design Magic add-on and how it works. It's a pretty simple add-on and it's used to basically create a smooth kind of a meta ball effect with different solids. So let me show you. Let's create a cable junction box. And so I'm gonna go right into my Design Magic solid. These are my base shapes I can start with. And I'm gonna use this box O2B and with nothing selected, I'm gonna hit add insert and there's our box. And then I'm gonna go into our Design Magic cables and I'm gonna select this static O3. And again, nothing selected, I add the insert and there we have it. And then I'll go to the top view and let's just move this cables around. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit. So something like that, maybe in a little bit. Look, I want to basically get that so it's centered on these, on these objects here. So we're in pretty good shape there. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and go to my DM Plus K-Pack. And this is the Boolean Union K-Pack. So everything in this K-Pack is going to union to whatever you apply it to. And I'm going to start with this bullet right here. I want you to notice what happens when I try and add this bullet to this object. It pops in here. It didn't add. Why is that? That's because this object is already an insert. You can't add an insert to an insert. And the reason for that is KidOps instead adds it to the target of that insert. So you can actually keep an insert selected and still add another insert. It'll just add it to the target of the insert. And since this doesn't have a target, it's not going to work. So I'm going to remove KidOps props with the snap mode set to face. I can add this and I just need to move it up, you know, scale it how I want. Maybe I'll move it in a little bit, something like this. Here's our junction box. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to add a little display area right in here. And again, with my DM plus my Boolean union, I'll just go to the basic cube and I'll add the insert. I'll add it here. And first thing I'll do is I'm going to tab into it and I'll select this edge right here and I'll dissolve the edge. So I made that a uh, angle. Then I will tab back out and now I'm going to move this out something like this. Let's look at the Design Magic add-on. In the Design Magic add-on, the first button is called Booleans Set to Exact. That means that if we look at this object and we look at these modifiers, you'll see that they're both set to exact. If I toggle them, now they're set to fast. Why would I want to go between fast and exact? Well, exact is perfect, but it takes a lot longer to process. So as we start building and adding more, we may want to model in fast mode, and then when we're finished, we'll set it to exact. So let's leave it now in fast. It looks like everything looks good, so I don't have any issues. And then I'm gonna hit this button that says add meta shape. And you'll see, look how doughy that becomes. It becomes very soft. I can say, let's do more and more. And if I look at my wireframe, you see how dense that's getting, and it's still, ex extremely soft. So let's go to the smooth and let's make it something like 30. Now let's look at it and you see that that looks a lot better and that may be what we want right there, that 30. Maybe we want it maybe a little, little bit softer, a little 40, something like that. Now notice here we're having a little bit of artifacting going on and there's an easy way to fix that and that is let's go into this object, this one right here, and I'll just go into local mode so we can see it. I'm going to use my KidOps toggle viewport display add-on. It's a very simple add-on. It doesn't have really an interface other than it uses keys and it allows you to toggle the display of whatever the selected object is between wireframe, bounding box, and solid. I'll leave it in solid right now. I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to select everything and go to item and I'm going to turn down all the mean bevel weight. So the mean bevel weight is zero for all edges. Then I'm going to select just this edge and this edge and I'm going to set that to one. And now I'll go into the modifier for this object and I'm just gonna turn this on and you'll see what happens. So why is that distorted? Well, that's just because if we look at our scale, we see that it's, it's way off. So if I hit control A and do scale, it's gonna get that correct. And then I can just adjust this here to get something that I like. Okay, now when I'm done with that, I'm gonna exit out of here and a control shift Z, again, use my little add-on to get into bounding box mode. And there we have it. And now we can see that we don't have the artifacting that we had before. It's not as, as pronounced. Now, the other thing I can do is I can also, of course, go into Design Magic and I can add some more smoothing. And also, I also might want to take the original object and say Control A and scale him. And when I scale him, things tend to, to work a little better too. Notice that we're really not as dense as we could be. So I can actually jack this to say like 0.01 and it'll tighten things up kind of nicely. I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit. Watch what happens when I try and do it. 
it's actually not bad, but it's 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 kind of lagging a little. So if I move it out here, let's do it again. And what I can do is I can turn this visibility for MetaShape off, and now it's much much faster. It works it works much better. So I can do this, and then turn it back on, and that works great. So that's what that button is there for. And if I want again, I can go less or more, and it'll give me uh, what I want. Notice it will never go past 0 0.015. So you might have to do that manually if you want that. And let's go ahead and change this as well. Let's, and I want the smooth to be like 10 or 20. We can keep adjusting this as we go. As you can tell, it's a non-destructive process. I want to add some more design magic elements to this. First of all, I want to cut a hole in here. So let's go into my cutters. Actually, before I do that, let's take a look at this. Notice this union has eight edges. So I can make this 12. And it'll change that a little bit uh, and it might affect a little bit although it won't really affect too much when it comes to uh, using the design magic meta shape add-on and because we are going to use that in our cutter so i come into our cutter and i grab this bullet i say i want to hit the face and i add the insert notice that it's actually going all over the place and it's not putting it snapping the center face but actually i'm going to escape out of this and i'm going to say q wireframe it is, but each one of these little tiny faces, you can tell that that's what they are. So what I really need to do is I need to go to design magic and I need to turn the visibility off and then come back into our object in KitOps and add the insert there. And now you see it comes in very nicely. And so let's take that, scale it a little bit. As you can tell, we'll scale it something like that and then control A, scale. Make sure that it's scaled correctly let's move it out a little bit so we can see that it's working in fact i might want to move it all the way out till it hits till it starts to hit those there we go so we have that so now that's done now another one i want to add is i want to take this cube and i'm going to add that insert to the top and let's scale it down something like this and i just basically want to pull him down like so and then I'm going to mirror him about the z-axis and notice it jumps all the way to the bottom. And why is that? Well, that's because this insert has its point of origin at the bottom. How do I fix that? Select the original insert here and we're just going to go into our object, set origin to the geometry of the insert. And now it, it works perfectly. Okay, so one thing that you'll notice here is that these objects are cutting crisp and then everything else is soft and why is that well it's pretty straightforward it's because if you look at our modifiers you'll see that the remesh and the smooth which is what design magic is applying when it adds meta shape these are up here and these new ones are applied afterwards and the ones that are applied afterwards are now part of a crisper design workflow and that's kind of neat because it allows you to contrast the soft shapes with the crisp shape. So as an example, let's take this one right here. Okay, that's the bottom one. If I hide it, watch what happens. You can see. Now I'm going to take that one and I'm going to drag it up before the remesh and the smooth. That's an actual smooth surface there, not a crisp surface. So you can get an idea of how you can use the order of the modifiers to create different things. I'm going to actually put that back down because I like that there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to basically tab into this. If I try and bevel this, it's going to go incredibly slow. So what I'll do is instead tab back out and I'll select my object and I'm going to use this viewport viz button. And that is in your preferences, in your add-ons, if you search for modifier tools, turn that on. And that gives you these four buttons here and they allow you to do some pretty cool things. And I'm going to turn this viewport viz off right here. And then I'll go into here and I'll select this and I'll use Control alt shift z to toggle the visibility. And then I'll tab into this object and I'll select all and I'm going to go back again. I'm going to go into my item and I'll take that mean bevel weight and I'm going to set that to zero. Then I'm going to just select this one edge right here and I'm going to select that mean bevel weight to one. And I'll tab out of that and I'll go in here and just turn this on and you'll see that we have this. Now it's again, control eight scale, let's, let's scale it and control shift Z and we'll come back in here and now I'll select this object and I'll say viewport viz and I'll turn all that on and you can see what, we do, what we've done. We've had that. Now, I don't particularly like the, 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 how big that is. So I can adjust that, but I'm gonna turn viewport viz off again with this selected I'll adjust it a little bit like this, and then we'll go back in here and turn the viewport viz back on. 
and that's our object. We're going to add a few more design magic inserts. Turn off wireframe. I'm going to come in here into the object and again I'll go back into my design magic and I'll turn the visibility off. Go into kit ops and I'm going to go into my widgets and I've got this one called a display LCD and I will set this to face and I'll add that right here and scroll it down something like this maybe a little bigger right there and we'll see what that looks like that looks pretty good and then in the widgets I'm also going to go in and I'm going to grab a bolt an Allen head bolt and I will this selected add this insert here it's actually snapping to the face so I want to turn that off to none and by the way if I'm adding an insert I can just hit the N key on my keyboard and I can scroll that out so I'll put that Actually, I'll hit the E key. I'll go right to the edge and I'll hit C to center. So with the C key, I'm right on the edge centered. I can move this over and I will mirror it along the X axis. And then I'll come over here and I'll add an insert over here as well. And this time I'll just pick a space that I want to put it something like right in here and we'll mirror it on the X, X axis again. Now, one of the things that I should point out is that if you look at my preferences for kit ops, in general, you'll see that my Boolean solver is set to exact. And so that means if I look at this object and we look down here at these bolts, that's exact. But if you look at some of these others, they were set to fast. So sometimes I may have to go back into my design magic and basically set them to fast. So now that they're all set to fast, it makes things a lot easier to work with. Again, back in Design Magic, we will go to our Design Magic Boolean Difference, or our cutters, and I'm going to select this parting line, and I will add that insert back here. Uh, let's take the edge again and center, and then I will hold the Alt key down and roll it around to where it's something that I like, and that works good. And with that set, I'm going to shift D, which is duplicate, and on the Y, I'm going to move it forward, and I'm going to cut. I want to set it up so that I cut into this object on the front. Let's make sure that we go into Design Magic, and we'll set the booleans for this to fast. And with this set, let's go to 7, and that's our top view. And we'll go to Wireframe, and I'm going to tab into this, and you can see that this whole parting line is just a series of connected vertices. And so what I'll do is I'll just stretch this out a little bit. And then I'll tab out of this. And as you can see, I'll move all the way down into here. And so if we look at our object, we'll see how that works. And that looks pretty good. I think that's a little thick of a parting line. So I'll go back in our modifier. Again, Design Magic has a whole bunch of modifiers associated with each one of these. And I'll go in this modifier, instead of 0.01, I'm going to hit 0.003. Make it kind of tiny. I'm going to do the same one with this one over here, 0.003. And then with this one up here, I'm going to just, I'll also go into the top view, and let's tab into it, and select everything, and let's scale. And then, of course, down through the whole object, and that's what it looks like. And then with this tab out of that, we'll select our object here. And I'm going to say Shift D and move it over over here. And there you can see this is our object before we meta shape it. Let's go ahead and select it now. So now this is done. Let's go back into our design magic and let's turn the visibility back on for our meta shape. This will take a little bit. And there we have pretty much our final product. Okay, so we're going to next convert this to mesh, but before we do that, I want to just do a couple quick changes. And so I'm going to turn visibility to off. I'll make sure that my booleans are set to fast, all of them. And then I'm going to select these screws, and I want to change them in size. I don't, they're just too big. So I'm going to drag here and say 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And I can just hit S too if I want to hit S and scale them, but it's just easier just to do it this way so I can get them exact. So, so now that's done, I can go into Design Magic and I'll turn it back on. So what I want to do is I want to add materials to this object. I also notice that I have 71,000 faces, and so I'm going to want to 
decimated a little bit as well. First thing is in order to add materials, I'm gonna to have to basically convert this all to a mesh. And so let's set the booleans to exact. That'll take a while, but we only need to do this one time. And then I'm gonna go back into KitOps and I'm gonna say convert to mesh. Okay, and now we're done. And that took a little while. Uh, now that that's done, let's tab into this. We've got a very dense mesh. So I'm gonna want to create new materials for this. So first, let's, with this selected, I'm gonna go into the KitOps free plastic paint and I'll just grab this dark mat and I'll add that material. And then I'll hit AA, select nothing, and I'm gonna go into the special materials from KitOps free, the free material kit. And I'm gonna add this rubber. With that rubber, I'll just say add material. Now it's added to the scene. Didn't add it to anything, but just the scene. So I'll come back in here, I'll tab, I'll select nothing and I'll just select one face of this front bezel and I'll hit the L key. It selects everything. And then I'll go in here and add a new slot and I'll sign it. And then I just need to make sure that's the rubber material that we just selected. And I'll do the same over here. Select this, hit the L button and assign it. And I'll tab out of that. And now you can see that we have our two materials for this object. So the next thing we want to do for this object is we're going to want to deal with all these faces. We have 71,000 faces. That's too many, especially if this is not a main hero kind of object. It's just a cable junction box. What we'll do is, if you recall, we just convert everything to mesh. So we do not have any modifiers on it. So what I'm going to do is with it selected, I'm going to add a modifier called decimate and I'm going to go to planar. It'll also take a little while because there's a lot of faces. And you can see that we went from 40,000 to 42,000 faces that we had. Now we're down at 2663, which may be too little. So I'm going to actually change this to 2.5 and that'll up our face count. And I said it's at 4,000 now. And that looks, this still looks good. It doesn't look any different from what it did. If I look at our wireframe, you'll see that it's not the best topology in the world, but it works great for what we're doing right now, that which is just creating a prop. And once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this modifier. Okay, this is our final junks and box. And I think you can see that it, it works pretty good. Uh, I can edit that custom text with just uh, like editing the actual insert, but we have all the things we talked about. It's a pretty quick workflow and uh, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you online.